back with us on the sports mag zone in what's being described as a logistical week from hell a depleted sunshine girls team was manhandled 75 35 by the silver ferns in the second and the final test played in auckland new zealand earlier today new zealand winning the two test series 2 nil with five jamaican players left at home due to their fear to secure u.s visas only seven ladies made the trip to new zealand trisha robinson is the president of netball jamaica and joins us good afternoon trisha good to have you here Hi, good afternoon. Thanks for having me. Good, good, good. Right, so here's the thing. The situation concerning the ladies, there was a, an Observer article that I'm sure you would have seen where, I mean, some, a couple members of the fraternity quoted by the newspaper were very scathing in their remarks, calling for heads to roll, and the article also quoted uh, the, uh, the netball authority saying that they'll be probing the situation to find out how it is that Jamaica could come with only seven players to play two tests. You've had some things to say about the situation, trying to put into perspective what happened. Uh, for the benefit of our viewers, uh, can you give us a timeline of what went into the squad selected for the New Zealand trip and the circumstances that caused you to arrive in New Zealand short-staffed? First of all, I want to say a big thank you to our ladies that participated in the tournament. Thank you for putting the black, green and gold colors on and representing for Team Jamaica. Um, you know, coming out of the Commonwealth Games, um, we certainly didn't expect to come out with, with, with the number of injuries that we, we had. Five injuries prior to the, the games itself, we had discussions with the team and two senior players indicated their unavailability due to school obligations that they would have had. Um, and you know, it is education first for us. Um, so with the five girls, um, that really did take us off guard, um, not getting the medical clearance from the medical team for them. We had a retirement out of the game also and one player indicated her unavailability having first put up her hand to say she was available early up in the year. Um, the three players that were available, they went on the tour with the youngsters that completed the squad. Um, we held trials um, amongst our development program, um, the players in the development program to ensure that we could fill the void. You know, we signed off on the agreement in June and we would have had to fulfill the contractual obligations then. Um, so having recognized afterwards that there are some members of the squad, mostly the youngsters that didn't have the either US or a UK visa, um, we certainly started looking at routes to transit. Um, through the U through Europe to take them into New Zealand. Um, we applied for visas for every member of the development squad. Um, we have visas that is. And we sought assistance through the Ministry of Sports um, to assist us with the process and we're really grateful to them for this. Um, we got notification that all the visas were ready on September 12th. Um, that didn't give us sufficient time to put in place arrangements to either pick up a UK or a US visas for the youngsters that didn't have that. And so we had the alternate routes secured um, then for them. Um, we're awaiting several, I mean, it's, I think our travel agent was really frustrated every day changing flights, looking for flights, um, because we couldn't confirm flights until we actually had our passports in hand. Yes. Because passports on Friday. Um, and so the first set of girls went out Saturday morning very early. Um, the youngsters were scheduled to leave with the team doctor in the evening because we have a policy. We don't allow our, our youngsters to travel on their own. There must be a responsible adult with them at all times. And unfortunately, we started losing seats the Saturday morning. 
And there began the troubles of actually getting them together so that they could leave. Um, in fact, <clears throat> we were having dialogue with New Zealand every step of the way. And um, we are thankful that they were very, they were very helpful also um, in the whole process. Um, a part of our conversation was, we have to look at our player welfare. So in terms of them landing, that is why we the games were reduced from three days to two days because it it you can't have a player land and in less than 24 hours they're taking the court it wouldn't have been fair to them it wouldn't have made any sense and that was one point we insisted on and well all parties agreed on that point and so we reduced the number of playing games from three yeah. to two um but, 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 but Trisha, hold on. So, so in what you've just said, is there anything now in retrospect that ought to have been done differently to cause more than seven ladies to land in New Zealand to represent the Sunshine Girls? You know, they say hindsight is twenty twenty, yeah. and with everything, lessons are learned. And we have learned the lessons, and we have begun to take the steps to ensure that this doesn't happen again. Um, we're looking at our, our tour processes, what happens, how it is that we deal with our development squad, our feeder program up into the senior team. So one of the things you noted, I said that we applied for visas for all 26 Um members in the squad. Um, so the New Zealand visas were never an issue in terms of the US-UK visas. Um, we we have it on our timeline as to how it is that we are going to be dealing with those. So the youngsters that would have gone, we would have expended funds to obtain the necessary visas for them. Um, and so one of the things one of the suggestions coming out, and well, it is more than a suggestion, it is something that we have to implement. As soon as you come into our development program, we ensure that we get the requisite visas for the youngsters. So in the event that they have to quickly go up into the senior program, there ought not to be anything really visa being an issue. Right, and Trisha, maybe you can explain to us also as to how this, of course, affected the Sunshine Girls' performance because we know how important synergy is to this sport in particular and, you know, other players having to play in another position that maybe they're not used to always playing in that position. Um, you know, we have to be thankful that Jamaica is a blessed island and we are blessed with, with so many talented youngsters um, the majority of those youngsters that would have been on the team are coming out of the Caribbean Games. They won that inaugural tournament. And so players are able to, at that particular age, move from, move between positions. And so even though you saw players move into other positions that they are never normally in, it is not a position that they are unfamiliar with. Uh, Trisha, I, I hear you speak about the New Zealanders and how, well, to put in my own words, tolerant and helpful they were with the process. Mm -hmm. But there is also a narrative coming from New Zealand that they have been disappointed by this series because they were using this as important, you know, practice for their Constellation Cup series coming up against the Aussies, I think, um, which is a very important battle for them. Um, did you get a sense that even while they were understanding about the issues that the Jamaica Sunshine Girls went through, that they were at the same time disappointed that they didn't get the kind of competition they needed or they were looking for out of this series? Well, first off, a country can't dictate to you who it is that you send as a player to participate. Eh? Um, and so we would have had to submit those names from early up based on the schedule in our tour agreement. And they would have seen the names that we would have submitted. Um, at that point in time, we got no objections. We got no queries because we outlined to them, we have injuries, we have um two players who raised their hands from the beginning of the series to say they would not have been available because they have practical sessions that they must do for school at this particular time of the year. And so we got no objections there. 
Yeah, but the, the original squad that you had put for that they would have seen still didn't end up being that squad. So they, with the Jamaica's um, roster still ended up being short-staffed or short-handed, even given what you had presented to them. So, I mean, at the, at, the, at the final stage then, when they were now faced with just seven players, no substitutes, and retired players on the bench, did you pick up any negatives at all from the New Zealanders, given what they've faced in the end? Um, no, we didn't. In fact, what I will tell you is that the New Zealanders assisted us in ensuring that we had those players on the bench um, so that we ensure that as per the events manual for World Netball, we had the minimum 10 players on a roster. Trisha, we're out of time. It's, uh, it, 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 it's sad because there's so much more to talk about this thing. We move on and we... Uh, well, what's the next engagement for the Sunshine Girls, may I ask before we go? The World Cup qualifiers is scheduled to be played in Jamaica, Kingston, Jamaica, in October, October 15th, 22. Eight Caribbean countries, along with Jamaica, are scheduled to play here, right here in Kingston, Jamaica. Yeah, uh, we're carrying that tournament, well, that, that, those qualifiers live. I thought there was something in between, uh, a, a little mini tournament perhaps, before the girls got into those qualifiers. Uh, no, not a mini tournament, but what happens after that is that we have the girls participating in the Fast Five tournament in New Zealand. That will be between November 5 and 6. Here you on that. Trisha, all the best to you. And yeah, uh, we, we certainly hope that lessons have been really well learned and we, mm -hmm. we, we won't be here talking about this in the future. Thank you so very much for having me. All the best to you. That's the president of Netball Jamaica, Trisha Robinson. We take a break, come back with more on the Sports Max Zone.